Okay, so in this demo here, we're going to be looking at how we can use absorbance versus time as a measure of the rate of reaction. Uh, I have the Pasco spectrometer out here, and it's connected via Bluetooth to my iPad. My iPad here has a spectrometry app open here. Uh, I can see that uh, this has been connected. If it hasn't found it yet here, you can toggle uh, which uh, interface to be connecting. Uh, what we're going to start off with here is just calibrating as we normally do here. So bottom left corner here, we're going to press record just to begin. Remember, we always want to calibrate the scale, make sure everything is zero properly to begin with. For calibrating dark here, it should know to actually leave the light off, but if you're unsure, you can just try to block out the light if you can here. So let's just calibrate the dark there. After calibrating uh, what it looks like for a completely uh, dark solution, no light going through, it asks us to calibrate the reference. Essentially here, as the light travels through one centimeter worth of the cuvette and travels through the solvent, in this case your water, I want to basically set that to be zero so that it's going to automatically subtract it from my solution. So uh, I have my blank solution just sitting here. Just double check for your cuvette here. Sometimes cuvettes here have two clear sides and two frosted sides. This one is clear on all four sides, so we're fine. The light is going in side to side. I'm going to press the calibrate reference button. Again, that's how the spectrometer knows. Okay, so this is what traveling through the centimeter of water looks like, and it's going to automatically subtract this blank from my actual solution. For this demo here, we're going to be doing a quick reaction between sodium hydroxide and phenethylene. So in my other cuvette here, let me just put the blank aside here. My other cuvette here is filled with 0.3 molar sodium hydroxide. At the start here, obviously it's not colored here. If I just put it in directly, it's not actually going to sense any reading. I'm going to actually drop in a drop of phenethylene. Uh, this actually shows the characteristic pink color uh, to begin with. And then what we're going to do, uh, it's a little bit hard to do mixing inside a cuvette. So I'm just going to use a toothpick here, try to stir it up as quick as possible, and then we'll go from there. So uh, again, 0.3 molar uh, sodium hydroxide here. This one here does have the two frosted sides. So you notice I'm holding the frosted sides. I'm leaving the clear sides uh, alone. I'm going to try to drop in a drop of phenethylene here. This is our indicator. It shows that really nice characteristic uh, pinky color. You'll notice that the pink isn't really diffused all that well. So again, just using a quick toothpick here, I'm going to try to mash some of that phenethylene down. Okay. So we definitely can see the starting phenethylene color here. It's pink uh, when we're in basic solution. I'm going to drop into my spectrometer here. This spectrometer here measures in real time. So as it's sending in uh, the whole Roy G. Biv uh, wavelengths of light here. Uh, we can just scroll the y-axis here to see sort of which uh, color is uh, being absorbed the most. I can drag this cursor here just to set it at some rough uh, lambda max here. I want to have a really strong uh, lambda max signal so that when I uh, watch this absorbance die away, uh, I'm going to have a, a good uh, big reading to begin with. So we just press check mark there to basically set it. We're going to send in a rough 568 nanometer or so. It's around the green or yellowy color here. Notice that this is the complementary color to the pink color that we're seeing when we sort of mix uh, red and blue together. I'm going to just stop that reading there. We already have set the wavelength. If this was a Beer's Law sort of analysis here, we can toggle over to the concentration versus time. I would just create a bunch of standard solutions and then just figure out the absorbance. This time what we're going to do is we're going to click over to an absorbance versus time plot. I'm just going to press the record button just so that we can um, get it uh, measuring right away. Uh, obviously, again, it's not scaled very well. Um, we can just scroll the y-axis here just so that you get a sense of uh, how this might be. Um, we can just verify here we're sending in that 568 nanometers that we saw from earlier. That's why it's uh, looking to us like a pink colored solution. Turns out for this reaction here, uh, we've been saying pretty much uh, phenethylene when it's in basic solution, so high pH, it tends to show a pink color. It turns out in a really uh, basic solution, um, the conjugate base, um, the, the molecule that's actually giving the pink color, actually also has a side reaction with um, hydroxide. And basically what ends up happening, it ends up forming a complex that ends up actually being colorless. So what's happening over time as we're speaking here is we see, we see the pink, right? We know that there's hydroxide present, but as more of that, uh, it's actually a P minus two ion. So it's a uh, diprotic um, conjugate base. As it ends up uh, reacting with hydroxide in a separate reaction, it's going to slowly die away. As I lose my pink coloration, uh, we should see this gradual absorbance here gradually uh, decreasing. So uh, right now here, we see a uh, gradual decline here. Just going to zoom in a little bit here, so hopefully you can see a little bit. Uh, if this is in the way here, you can just drag it away. Okay, I'm just going to leave it on for another minute or so, so you can just have a look at how this absorbance drops. Uh, because the color is associated with uh, the P minus two ion, uh, 
showing off that pink color, uh, any drop in absorbance, however long this takes, would be a measure of uh, rate versus time. So we can track that a change in absorbance versus change in time. This would be perfectly fine to measure the rate uh, already, okay, just tracking this change in absorbance. It's best to say absorbance has no units, okay, sometimes you see AU, which stands for absorbance units, okay, but absorbance is actually uh, sort of a logarithm of the ratio of light intensities going through, and logarithms should definitely uh, not have any units to it. If we actually did that Beer's Law relationship in really dilute solutions, there's a linear correlation between uh, absorbance and concentration. Once we find that linear relationship, whatever the formula may be for that exact uh, chemical, for that solution, we can actually use that formula, um, recalibrate absorbance, uh, requote them as concentration, and we can actually track this as a change in concentration versus time. Just looking at the shape of this graph here, it looks like the rate, okay, the slope wasn't all that um, steep to begin with. It took a little while to get going, and as this reaction is uh, occurring more and more, we actually see this one here drop off a little bit quicker. Thanks, guys.